Are you having big expectations from the Lord? Yes. That's good because the Lord has big expectations from you. Are you going to keep him happy? Amen. By doing all that he wants you to do. Amen. Yes. <coughs> Yesterday evening when we were doing the Passover, we were sitting up on the stage. We had some very important guests. Did you notice them? Amen. <coughs> Whom did you see? Other than the bishops and the pastors and Jill and the music ministry and myself. Whom did you see up there? Jesus. You saw Jesus. Anybody else? Angels. You saw angels. Anybody else? <laughs> hmm? You saw the prophets. <laughs> Which prophets did you see? <laughs> Prophet Robert missed, as I have introduced. <laughs> the 24 elders came yesterday. Amen. And when they came and I saw them coming up to the stage, I told Bishop Dan, the 24 elders are joining us for the Passover. And immediately his hair and my hair began to stand as they surrounded us. And last night when I was spending my time in prayer and I spoke to my, my mentor, he's my mentor, I'm his disciple, <laughs> we're all disciples of Jesus, but Jesus has appointed the three prophets to teach. So Isaiah told me, did you see the three did you see the 24 elders? I said, yes, I did see them. He said, last night, Jesus told all of heaven to stop their work. And look down at the Passover. Yeah. So all of heaven stopped their work. And were looking down at the Passover. How the Philippines was going to move and shift in the realm of the Spirit. And then the Lord said, Who will go down and join them? And the 24 elders said, We will go. And then they came. Now I didn't know that part of the story until I spent my time in prayer. And I was uh, very deeply touched at how heaven so closely wants to work with us. Do we have the same heart to work closely with heaven? Yes. No? For everything that we, we do, do we consult heaven or do we consult our hard drive? You see? Sometimes because of our educational background and training, we feel we know everything. Right? And we can go to the library and pull out books by this author and that author and consult and get the answers how to do God's work. But the best author for God's work is who? It's God himself. Amen? So we have to always go and consult the Lord. And in these last days, because they are hard and difficult days that we are going to go through, if you remember in my teaching last night, I said, darkness and light walk together. Mm -hmm. It's very yes. close. Yes. The parable of the wheat and the tares, they both grow together. Yes. You almost cannot discern mm. which is the wheat and which is the tare. They look so alike. And in order to make that discernment, God gives us special tools in every age. <coughs> And in our age, he has given us a very special tool. And that is called the divine counsel. And we have to learn to walk with God's divine counsel. Amen. Amen? Now, I, I know I touched on that topic a little bit. 
at the conference, I could not exempt myself from talking those things because they are important. We are in that age and time and we cannot ignore this. For me to ignore saying something which heaven wants me to tell you is like for me to write my own death sentence. And God will say, you remember this word? And I'll have to bow my head. And he'll say, I told you to speak this to your Filipino brothers and sisters. Why did you not speak this word? So he'll say, depart from me, you wicked servant. See, I also have a death sentence on my neck. <laughs> so the more you're called to some ministry, you walk a thin line of obedience to God. Amen. Amen? It's no joke. There's a great glory, there's a great joy, but the first and foremost answer is obedience to the Lord. We have to obey the Lord. And when we obey Him, He will make the way because He is the way. He is the truth and He is the life. So obedience opens the Lord to make a way for us. Even if there is no way. He will make a way. Amen. You know, we sing that song, no? Huh? It's a beautiful song. Yeah. When there seems to be no way, He will make a way for you and for me and for the whole nation. But the key to open that way is obedience. And that's why Jesus Himself was so highly exalted, right? Because He was obedient to the will of the Father. Even in the most difficult hour of his life, he said, not my will, Jesus, yes. but thy will be done. And because of that, it made a way for all of us to enter into the Holy of Holies. Amen. Can you imagine one little disobedience on Jesus' part? What would happen to all of us? All of us would go down the abyss. All of us. But one, that obedience... And look at the price he paid. But look at the joy we have. Amen. Amazing, right? Yes. Amazing grace. So also it is with us. You are called now to move this nation to make it God's prince. And your obedience will make the way. Amen. Your obedience will make the way. You may not know the way. But He is the way. When you say yes to the Lord, show us the way, He will part the Red Sea and He will find the way through it. The Hebrews didn't know that. Till they stood before the Red Sea, some began to faint with fear. They could see the chariots coming. Long line of chariots, maybe five miles long. And all the Egyptian, the horrible Egyptian soldiers marching towards them. And Pharaoh must have said, now we got them. And now we'll slaughter them. But who got slaughtered? Pharaoh and his armies got slaughtered. Because he made a way. Moses and Aaron were only obedient. They didn't know the way. But their obedience became a way for him who knew the way. And that's going to be our story. We all write the same story under his story. <laughs> yeah. Just by our obedience. And that's why I say don't let theological barriers come in your way. We constantly got to upgrade our theology. God is, what we know about God is a peanut. The size of a peanut in comparison to him. He's huge. Every time when people say you get a lot of revelation about what God is wanting to teach in this time, and I say, I have barely touched the hem of his garment. Because there's so much to know. So much to know about the Lord Jesus. He cannot be exhausted. We cannot know everything. We need many, many lifetimes to keep learning more. 
And even in the thousand year reign that we will live with him, we will still not know everything about him. But we will know enough to carry our life through. We will know enough. We will know more than what those who lived in the Old Testament know. We will know more than those who just came to know Jesus at the first Pentecost. We will know more, sure. But that is still not enough to know everything about him. He is just so awesome. And we've got to keep that in our mind because it keeps us humble. Yeah? When a teacher walks in a classroom and she finds that there are highly intelligent students who knows sometimes more than her, it's a humble thing. It's a humbling thing. Amen. To stand before and say some topic and then a student stands up and gives you everything that, is, that you never even knew about the topic. It's a humbling experience. Yes. But that's okay. To be humble is great. So we may not know everything about the way, but we know Jesus is the way. Amen. Yeah. And one of the tools that he wants to give us is to learn to walk with his angels and saints. Amen. That's called the divine counsel. Now some of us, as I said, our theology may say we can't talk to dead men. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. If you believe in that theology, you are already a dead man. <laughs> because God's people never die. Hallelujah. They only change Amen. from one degree of glory to another. Right? They never die. They are only translated, transformed. So any theology that tells us you can't talk to angels and saints is a dead theology. Because they walk with us. And we are beginning to see that now. More and more. In these last days. And we have got to open ourselves up to this. True, there are precautions to be taken, because I told you, light and darkness walk together. But if you are praying every day to the Lord, you are walking with the Lord in your prayer time. Amen. You are honoring Him by keeping, setting aside that holy time in the day, Amen. which is just for Him Amen. to be with you in the sanctuary of His own heart. No evil can touch you. No evil can touch you. They will try, but they will fail. Yes. Amen. That's they will right. fail. So you have to walk with that confidence. Mm. But if you are skipping your prayer time, then you have to be very careful. That's right. Because if you try to use spiritual tools and your own spiritual life is going down, right. you are in a dangerous place. You have to be spiritual enough to use spiritual tools. It's like if you are being qualified to be an electrical engineer and you try to do mechanical work, you're playing with fire. Right? You will make some kind of machine which will all burst up and it may kill you. It's like the rocket which failed. <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. It'll be like that. Thank God there were no people in that rocket and they didn't die like some of American rockets that exploded and the astronauts died. So, if you're doing your basic stuff or walking with God in prayer, keeping your life open to the work of the Holy Spirit, confessing your sin. Like I was telling Brother Whedon, Whenever I finish a conference, I normally spend two days in quiet, absolute quietness. I don't go out to talk to anybody or meet with anybody. It's a quiet time to sit before the Lord and to examine my own conscience. Lord, is there anything in that conference that I did 
and say that robbed you of your glory. I have to confess. I have to fall before the Lord. And it takes two days sometimes. Just to examine your own conscience. And that's why I was not very open to coming this morning here. So last night, instead of spending two days, I spent two hours in quiet prayer, just letting the Lord send His Spirit to examine me. See, we've got to walk the holiness line. Amen. And when we walk in holiness, then God will give us His tools. And they are powerful. As that scripture said in 2 Corinthians 10. The weapons of our warfare are mighty. They are not carnal. They are mighty. They are mighty to pulling down strongholds. I was surprised because when I was reading about that rocket launch. And uh, how it could hurt the Philippines nation. I said Lord. Now just cause that rocket launch to fail. This is, this is not the place and time for that rocket launch. You know that Lord. So if you would fail it, the people in the nation would be blessed. Amen. And it failed. Amen. It failed. I know thousands must have prayed that prayer. I'm not the only one. Yeah. But to me, I prayed and I saw the answer. Amen. And it was a joy to know that God honored but I'm sure thousands have prayed, both in the Philippines and in other parts of the world. Yeah. And I have to refrain from trying to take any credits. I only take the joy. Amen. <laughs> yeah. That's why even heaven gets joy. It says, when you are of one heart and one mind and one unity, Complete my joy. Complete my joy by loving one another, serving one another. Mm. So we, we can take the joy. So with that foundation, is there anything you want to know about the divine counsel that you don't already know? Yes? Many things you'd like to know. Like what? How can you see them? <laughs> yes. You have to pray. Open my eyes, Lord. Yes. So, begin to ask for that. In your prayer time, if your heart is desirous to see the angels and saints, say, Lord, open my eyes. I prayed that prayer many, many years. Many years. I said, Lord, I want to see into the spirit realm. And the Lord said, there will be times you wished you never asked this. Because it's, it's a fearful place. To see demons walk around in your city. And to do, see what they do is fearful. And sometimes you would say, Lord, yeah, you know, just shut down my spiritual eyes. <laughs> I don't want to see what I'm seeing. It is horrible. Or what they do to men and women who don't know God. But that should not re refrain you from asking. Ask the Lord every day without fail. And don't be frustrated if it doesn't happen immediately. In his appointed time, suddenly you will begin to notice angels around you. Like yesterday's talk, I was not prepared for. I just walked into my bedroom and when I walked into my bedroom, I noticed somebody at the wall standing there. I turned around and there was the angel. And he said, yeah, your talk has changed. You're not giving what you prepared. God has got something different. So that was three hours before I could leave. And God gave you a new talk. Whatever I spoke that day, last night. So, ask the Lord. Desire, just as Paul says, earnestly desire the spiritual gifts. There must be that earnest desire from your heart 
Lord, open my eyes to see the angels and the saints in heaven. Amen. Amen. Give me that vision. Give me that, you know, spiritual eyes to see. When you begin to be earnest and God begins to see that you're walking a life in the way that you should walk, He'll open your eyes. Suddenly, you will begin to notice. Yeah. I remember when I was at Metagoshan and some of you may have seen those videos or whatever on, online. And Brother Sadhu and Brother Vincent began the anointing service. I was sitting with one of uh, the pastors who is part of Sadhu's ministry, Pastor Lutra. I don't know whether you know him. Lou Lutra. I was sitting with him and I told him there are two of the 24 elders standing next to Sadhu and Vincent and they are pouring heavenly oil into their bowl. I said, their bowls will never run dry. He said, you can see them. I said, yeah, I can see them. And they got the heavenly Metagoshan blessing oil. People were flung. You must have seen those videos. People were lifted off the ground the way they were anointed. The power of God was awesome with that heavenly anointing. At the end of the whole conference, one evening, uh, Brother Sadhu and Brother Vincent called all the pastors together and asked for their evaluation of the conference. And they were sharing their evaluation. And one of the ladies who works with uh, Brother Sadhu, her name is Amuta, uh, she said, I want to report a miracle that happened at this conference. So everybody was wanting to know what the miracle was. So she said, normally when we have these anointing services and for 1,000 people to be anointed, Brother Sadhu uses about, you know, you get a five-gallon bottle of oil. He uses about six gallons, six of those, those five-gallon bottles because he takes a lot of oil. <laughs> and he puts, the oil is flowing down his hand. He has to pull his sleeve up and he just puts his hand in the bowl. <laughs> so he uses lots of oil. And she said, I bought six of those bottles because I, that's, that's what I, I know and I estimate how much oil he will use for the anointing service. But we used only two bottles. And where did the rest of the oil come? And said, he was generous with the oil. And the sadhu doesn't care. He just does it. <laughs> and then sadhu said, I'll tell you where the oil came from. He said, two of the 24 elders were standing next to me. And they were pouring the oil. And as I laid my hand, they laid their hand. And that's why people got flung with the anointing. So Luther turned to me at that meeting and he said, you were right. So Brother Sadhu saw him talking to me. He said, what's the problem? So Lou said, no, Brother Bob told me that when the anointing service began, he saw two of the elders standing there pouring the heavenly Metagoshan oil into the bowl. And he said, the oil will never run dry. <laughs> The bowl will never run dry. So it was a confirmation. So God will open your eyes. If you keep asking, it's the asking that is important. Desire in your heart that you will seek the Lord. And remember, when these things happen, there is a purpose. There is a purpose for everything under the heavens. That's the scripture, right? From Ecclesiasticus. There's a purpose. So God's not going to give you this spiritual vision just to make you be able to say, I saw this and I saw that. There's a purpose. And soon that purpose will be made known to you. You'll be called to speak at a conference. An angel will come and deliver what you have to speak. You don't have a choice of what you want to speak. You are now put yourself under the Lordship of Jesus completely. And when the Lord wants you to say something, which He wants to, you to say, He will send it to the angel. Then you will perceive the angel and He will give you the word. Sometimes He will give you one word. And you can get frightened because what do I teach on one word? How do I speak for one, on one word? One word. <laughs> and that's faith. So you come to your next. Amen. 
your next level of growing and that is faith. Yes. You have to walk that line. Amen. You have to throw your papers and notes out. Wow. I prepared a lovely talk, lovely PowerPoint, so beautiful it looked. Well, gone to the dogs. <laughs> Not gone to the dogs, gone to the hard drive. <laughs> I didn't, couldn't use it. God changed his plan at that last moment. I and mean, he, he's looking at things and he, I never question his wisdom. Amen. He is wisdom himself. Amen. And I don't question what he says to do. Just do. Just learn to do it. Amen. Yeah. So, God will open your eyes when you ask. And the next thing he's going to do is to call you to walk by faith Amen. and that's a hard job too Amen. right you will be asked to do things you know it grows your faith is something that grows yes. nobody is born with ex extraordinary faith Amen. if anybody is born with extraordinary faith I would like to come and say I worship you I worship. <laughs> only God is born with extraordinary faith yes. he's not born he's always there so we have to grow in faith and God takes you through the test. Right? He'll let you fail. He'll tell you you failed. And you can come back to him and pray and say, Lord, I'm sorry, please forgive me. And the Lord said, I will forgive you. Help my unbelief. I give you a next chance. But if you persistently fail, then the gift is taken away. Because you're not walking in it. Yes. You're not walking by that gift. It will be sidetracked. So if God opened your eyes to see angels, that's wonderful. You'll begin to see angels ministering around, flying around, increasing the levels of holiness and faith. That's the beginning. The next thing is the angels will come to you with the message. And say, go to the mic and speak this message. And say, oh, I can't do that. Well, you've got to do it. Amen. You have to do it. You have to trust God. And say, what is the message? He'll say, go to the mic. Yeah, but what's the message? Just go to the mic. <laughs> <laughs> and if you say, I won't go to the mic till I know the message, the angel will walk off. He will walk off. He'll give it to somebody else. Angels don't take commands from us. They bring the message and they'll cooperate. But they are under God's authority. They are told, go to the person and say, go to the mic. And the Lord, the Holy Spirit will tell you what the message is when you open your mouth. And you've got to do it. So that's a training. Like last time when I came to HI. When I got into the door, I was literally obstructed physically by the angel. It just kept me like that. Don't go to the head. Just stay behind. I said, for what? He said, you will know when you reach there. And when I reached there, he opened the scroll. And I had nothing, no teaching, just words. But I spoke for two and a half hours. Because the spirit of the Lord just began to give the meaning of those words and bring it out into the open and that's that's a walk by faith Amen. each day sometimes he takes you to places to do things which are frightening last year I had to do a prophetic act in the center of a city in Philadelphia when I told the people we have to do this act they said no no we can't do this act there are more than 22 police cameras in that place if you do one thing wrong, the police will just swoop down there and the police headquarters are not very far. I said, I don't care. God wants this to be done. He will block the cameras. He will do what he wants. I have to do this act. and we, I will do it. If nobody wants to do it, I will do it. If I have to go to jail, I go to jail. But I trust God to do it. And we did it. The police car came, he looked at me, and he walked away and drove away. Of course, after the act was over, I was saying, Lord, please take me out of this country. Don't stop me at the airport. <laughs> All my human fears started rising up. Yes, oh, you must yeah. 
Now I'll be back in that town not very soon, not very late. Sometime in the month of July I'll be back there again. <laughs> Maybe there'll be a policeman from the control center who'll be there at the conference and he will say, all our cameras went off or something or they'll be funny. <laughs> but yeah, as I said, the acts that God will get you to do will test your faith. And every time you do it, you come to know more about the power of God. The love of the Lord. The act that has to be done because it is setting thousands free. You do the act and a lot of people are being set free. You don't do the act, a lot of people are robbed of their salvation in Christ. See? And that's, that's a major way, way that evangelization can take. This is an explosion. All of these supernatural acts that God will call you to do actually is like explosive evangelization. It opens the door to thousands being set free. And God cares for the people, you see. But he's looking for someone on the earth who will... I look for a man. He always looks for the man. Either the man will preach or the man will do an act that will engage the supernatural powers of God to break open vast amount of people that can be evangelized and open to the gospel. You know, sometimes I've been very, very surprised when I go for a conference and somebody comes up from there and says, Brother Bob, you know, I saw you in this place and because of what you said, my life got changed. I'm trying to think, when was I ever in that place? And then I realized I probably was taken in that place in the spirit, in my prayer time. And God did something and that, that person came to the Lord. I remember once five doctors from a hospital, they all came to me and said, you know, you, you preached at this hospital. I said, preached? Oh, no. where, where does anybody preach in a hospital? I said, yeah, you came to our hospital and you preached in the hospital and five of us gave our lives to the Lord. I said, I'm happy you gave your life to the Lord, but you know, I can't remember when I came, ever came to a hospital. Then I realized that in my prayer time, sometimes my spirit goes. The Lord takes the spirit. And I am preaching in a place I don't even know. Which hospital where? But five doctors came to the Lord. They saw me. Now they see my face again and they connect the, the two. It is supernatural. But all this comes because you have learned to just allow the Spirit of the Lord to do this extraordinary supernatural work in these last days. So that's the beginning of how you begin to walk with heaven. Right? Yeah. Heaven is in my heart. Is there a song like that? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's the way it goes. Now you see, we have to move from singing songs to becoming the song. Right? We cannot sing heaven is in my heart when we have never tasted what heaven looks like. Yeah? What's the use of singing a song where there's no truth for us in it. For us to sing heaven is in my heart, it means I'm walking with the citizens of heaven. Amen. With the angels and the saints. With the Holy Spirit. And while we sang that song, the time has come to let that song be us. And I said, the first thing is to earnestly desire. Earnestly desire that God would take you there. Lord, I want to walk with your angels and your saints. Hebrews chapter 6, verses 5 and 6. And you can read the first five or six verses. Very clearly says, I talked about it last night in the talk about the power of the age to come. We are in that age. We, that scripture is written for you and for me. And we have to taste that scripture. Whenever you see an angel asking you to taste a scroll, he's asking you to taste the word of God. Taste it so that it becomes part of your life. 
You can say like